As we continue our journey into New Mexico's atomic age, we head to Albuquerque for a visit to the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History. One of only seven national museums not located in Washington, D.C., this museum in Albuquerque draws visitors each year eager to learn about the Manhattan Project and the dawn of the atomic era. Not to mention get an extreme close-up view of their extensive collection of airplanes, rockets, missiles, and nuclear weapons, the largest collection you can see in the United States. But the nuclear age gave rise to more than just weaponry, from medical applications to atomic pop culture memorabilia. The museum's director, Jim Walther, helps me explore the spectrum of exhibits devoted to the atomic world. So this museum has got a very broad mission to speak about everything nuclear, and that includes, of course, the history of New Mexico, because the nuclear world began here, as we know, just before World War II with the Manhattan Project. And so talking about that age, you know, even nuclear history having a, a designation to a time period in, in, in America called the Atomic Age. So how did that speak to what the culture was like in New Mexico and, and beyond? Well, back at that time, you know, New Mexico was a very rural place. Uh, there weren't very many large cities at all. And when the Manhattan Project came to New Mexico, there were some military installations, but they were much smaller. Mm -hmm. To bring something like this to New Mexico uh, was truly really unprecedented. And it was because of the people that were a part of it, people like J. Robert Oppenheimer, mm -hmm. who had spent time in New Mexico as a young person from the East came out to New Mexico, found it to be not only a beautiful place, but a very isolated place, a place where they could count on no one knowing what was going on because the Manhattan Project was very secret. Right. We have the Trinity site, the place where the bomb was tested in July. And of course, we have some very important material about that too. Here in the museum and in this exhibit, this is the Packard Clipper. This is the real car that the scientists rode in. You think about what they spoke about Mm -hmm. in this car, driving back and forth at 25 miles an hour from southern New Mexico to Los Alamos. It must wow. have taken almost all day. A long conversation. Yeah, <laughs> opportunities to talk about how do you make things work, because this was moving from theoretical physics to applied physics, no one had ever done it. Right, and so that brings me to, you know, today here we are in this museum and so many different artifacts and pieces of material to really get in depth into what you know that whole age was about. So can you kind of give a brief overview of what Certainly. you have in the museum here? There's an exhibit about the 509th, which was the um, Army Air Corps group that dropped the bombs to end World War II. We have those bombs here. We have Those are concurrent copies. They're not reproductions made later. Mm -hmm. So Fat Man and Little Boy, the two first atomic weapons ever created, the only two ever used, in fact. Mm -hmm. And they're real here because they're from that age. We have the only gadget. The gadget was the inside of one of those bombs, and it was what was tested at Trinity Site. And we have the only one of those that's not a reproduction. There's also the Plymouth. This was the first car they used to move atomic material. It was just a Plymouth. Mm -hmm. And they stuck the plutonium in a box and put it on a back seat and drove it from Los Alamos to the Trinity Site. Very interesting stories. Mm -hmm. And then as this exhibit moves on, you learn about how did we move into the Cold War and how did we go from having the Soviet Union as an ally mm -hmm. at the end of World War II to a mortal enemy only four years yeah. later. You know, the world yeah. still is uh, uh, confronted with some of these issues, as we know, from reading our news and seeing what's going on there, it's still very topical. Right, it's, it's still relevant. Yeah. After delving into some of the backstories of the items housed in the museum, Jim gives me a personal tour of the exhibits. And so I think most people think atomic, they always think of the bomb, but there's so many other applications of atomic energy that have been used and you guys have a whole bunch of things on display here. That's right. Mm -hmm. Nuclear medicine is the largest place where Americans and people get a connection to atomic energy or nuclear power. We have some very old x-ray equipment, and oh, x-ray wow. is a type of radiation. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's included here in the museum. So some very old x-ray machines and fluoroscopes and products that uh, were part of the pre-World War I time. Mm -hmm. From tales of quackery to missile accidents, Jim enlightened me on nearly every object within the museum, bringing each one to life. I am certainly walking away with a head full of knowledge I did not have before.